Alrighty, and if you're ready, you know I'm ready. Let's fucking do it. Rear Naked Takes, back in this on a nice Thursday, um, December 15th. Ed, what, what, what is Thursday known for? Thirsty Thursday. And it's Thursday Night Football. Holy shit. I thought that was a... Or, or Ed over here is drinking fucking vodka out of a water bottle. Yeah, Ed is Ed is definitely turned up right now. Yeah, Thursday night football for uh 49ers versus the Seahawks. I really don't give a flying fuck about NFL right now because my team isn't doing the best. Ed, how are the Patriots doing? Playoffs. Are you serious? They actually clinch? Nah, you're fucking nah nobody clinched yet. They're in the but, hunt. Besides uh Philadelphia, didn't they already already clinch wild card? Probably. Hmm. They're gonna be first seed. Yeah. Well, Ed, we had a very festive and uh eventful UFC 282, and I'm sure. Wild. And I'm sure you ju- are pretty sure everybody wants us to talk about the whole Patty shit. Shows the um, whole so I mean, we might as well shoot from the hip, Ed. What'd you think about? The judges, the scorecard, the fight itself. Let's just get right into it. Patty the Batty versus Jared Gordon. Embarrassing fight for Patty. Um, it's sad. It's sad to see, honestly. Um, you know, it's it's a guy we you know we talked about coming up, but it's just he's not there yet. He's not there yet. They really got to build him up. That first round, Jared Gordon came out with some heavy strikes very early on. Um, and I think he took the round. In the second round, they tagged each other. Could have been whatever. And that third round, you know, it was all Jared Gordon because Patty didn't do SWAT. Gordon had clinch. Clinch control at the cage. So, I mean, sucks, but that's what he had. And in my head, I was thinking, like, no way Patty wins this. Like, it's over. It's embarrassing. Somehow he wins a fucking fight. And I remember seeing a clip of him on the countdown saying, like, I don't get fight of the night. They don't touch me enough for fight of the night. I get performance of the night. And then what happens after this fight? He's literally, like, looking at the crowd. Like, it's fight of the night, right? It's fight of the night. Like, huh? And then there's another clip of him going to Dana, and he calls Dana, and he's like, hey, Dana, fight of the night? Fight. Like, bro, like, it's not a good look on Patty. Boy sounds like he's in debt right now, especially with all the <laughs> shit going on that he's asking, you know, reporters for, for payment or interviews. Yeah. Yeah, there's it's definitely... Not good. Yeah, I'm not, we're not going to go into those topics, I mean, but the thing is, it's like, yeah, I don't know. There, there's a definitely a lot of clusterfuck in the buildup for Patty and all that stuff. They finally gave him a um, platform, and well, I thought he was doing pretty good up until like the fight. After the fight, how everything unfolded, like it was just one snowball like turned into a fucking big ass avalanche. Like it was, it was just a complete shit show. Uh, I'm not gonna t- talk about the fight in detail. Uh, if Ed would like, if Ed wanted wants to do that, he can. But there's not much I to talk much about. Broke it down. Yeah, there's there's not much to talk about. It's Patty didn't win that fight. I don't know anybody besides those three judges and the three stooges over at Barcelona Sports that agreed with that decision. They like and if if you if you know anything about combat sports, MMA, the judging. And I don't even think it, it takes uh, uh, like an MMA head like us to decide that hey, Patty lost. I think even a fucking cat. I think fucking Chris can uh, distinguish that. We already know Chris is dumb as fuck to begin with. So if if Chris can uh, decide or distinguish that hey, Patty lost that fight, then I'm sure any anybody can. But nice. um. Yeah, dude, it just I think I think this is more just about the business and the politics of it all. They did a good job in building up Patty. 
Patty got his sponsorships. Patty got this. Patty got that. Patty's making money. But the biggest comparison that we have that Patty's doing right now is what Connor did. The thing, the the difference about Connor and Patty is that Patty, he already has all this limelight, this platform. He's doing all this stuff, podcasting, like he he's he's very busy. And I'm already and I'm sure he's making that money. During this time, on McGregor's side, well, <clears throat> the UFC wasn't that popular and McGregor was making it popular. But McGregor didn't uh, care about the limelight. He didn't care about any of that. He was just being himself, uh, doing his marketing genius, marketing genius shit. And the best part of, of all of it was that he was fucking knocking people unconscious. Was knocking dudes out. Yeah. And that's the thing that Patty isn't doing. Not saying that he can't, but I, I think Patty's taking the, the wrong approach to this. I think, yes, he's enjoying the limelight. Yes, he has a platform. Yes, he has all these sponsorships and he's making money elsewhere besides the UFC, whatever. But if you really want to be reputable in your craft, you need to focus on that. You know what I mean? Like, first and foremost, you're a fighter. If you want, everything else is like on the side. If you want to make a statement in the UFC, make a statement and uh, to everybody and look credible doing it, you need to be like fighting at your tip top shape, making all these crazy ass performances and making all your opponents look like, you know, they're like nothing to them. And I guess like the biggest comparison that we have currently is Sean O'Malley. And the thing about Sean O'Malley is maybe he's not as um, talkative or like, yes, like, like Patty is, you know what I mean? Like his charisma isn't as high, but the thing about Sean is that he fucking focuses on his fight. There's not, there hasn't been one fight besides the Pedro Munoz fight that we can say that Sean hasn't given it his all. Fucking, yep. he put he put on one of the best performances, in my opinion, that I've seen from Sean versus Peter Yawn. Now, it's arguable if he won that fight or not, right? Because people can make that comparison, too. But the thing is, though, fucking Peter Yawn is, like, top one, two in the fucking world at that division. And mm-hmm. he put up a fucking phenomenal fight against him. He had Peter on skates, as uh, Izzy would like to say. He had him on fucking skates, and, and he... He made him fall and he made him fight. You know what I mean? And I'm sure that was something that Peter Yan was definitely not like um, looking forward to. You know what I mean? Or n- not looking forward to, but not that wasn't something that he was anticipating. He did not expect that Sean O'Malley was going to go out there, put on that kind of performance, and actually and ultimately win. Jared Gordon isn't even ranked. Sean O'Malley's last unranked fight was versus uh, Paiva, right? Or am I tripping? Uh, before it was Munoz. Munoz was ranked though. Yeah, I think. Yeah, so his his last. I'm I, I'm I'm asking what what I was think his Paiva last? Might have been top fifteen. <clears throat> you think so? I think. Well, so, like yeah. a hypothetical, hypothetically speaking, even even if he was, because he beat Kyler Phillips. So okay, well, let's just say he's t- he's ranked fifteen. Even at a rank 15, fucking uh, Sean O'Malley finished them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that Patty needs to finish all of his opponents. I mean, it'll help him a lot. But you need to put on these stellar performances, especially if you're self-proclaiming that you're that guy. Now, I understand whenever it comes to, you know, saying your shit, uh, marketing, your charisma, whatever, like you're going to say shit to sell the fight. So I'm sure whenever the cameras go on, he's going to say something like, oh, I don't get fight of the night. I get performance of the night, whatever. But then like in the in the heat of the moment, like he might think something or whatever. But it's he just he just needs to overall understand that you're a fighter. Put on the performances and you'll get everything. But whenever you do this kind of shit and it clearly looks rigged. Yeah, Busta Nut said. Felt like know. UFC took a hit for the first time in a while because of the judging in Dana's post fight press conference. Yeah. And it does feel like that. Definitely feel like it hurts the brand. Um, a lot of casuals and even non casuals that watch, you know, <laughs> were stunned by that decision. Mm-hmm. It's embarrassing. 
it looked it looked just a little too obvious what they were trying to do or, or what was going on. Even if it is a commission, like it's just it was a shithole. It's it's literally shit. People want to complain about the freaking main event decision. That main <coughs> event decision does nowhere near compares the decision for that fight. Because you can make an argument for the main event. You can clearly make an argument. If if you don't think there's an argument there, well, we're about to tell you right now because there's literally an argument for that main event. There's nothing. I, there's not any kind of argument for that Patty fight. Yeah, at not. least I don't think there is. No. Um, and then look at the scorecard. What was? How was it scored in the third? It's so funny because uh, I actually heard or listened to Ariel Hawani. Uh, but they gave Patty the they, third. Like that makes no fucking sense. Yeah. How and, can you give Patty that third round? Exactly. Uh, yeah, I don't want to play Ariel Hawani shit, but yeah. So two judges gave, uh, or one judge, Chris Lee gave Patty that last round, and that I I do not fucking see that. Um, and even then, like round one, they both said I don't I don't remember exactly what round went to what, but I want to say, what what were the rounds? It was two and three, right? That that had clearly went for uh, Jared Gordon. Well, I thought round one went to Gordon. Okay, well then that's that's the round then. But <clears throat> yeah, dude, I don't know. It's how Busta Nut said it. The UFC definitely took a hit. Round we two, round two looked a little better for Patty, but round one definitely went to Gordon. Um, yeah. and then round three, I mean, Gordon had two takedowns. They both had twenty-one total strikes. There were six to four significant strikes, and on top of that, Gordon had like three minutes, you know, clinch control. So as boring as it is, you know, he won. That's how he won the fucking fight. Yeah. Um. um but. It wasn't decided that way, and that's fucking <clears throat> embarrassing. Yeah, uh, even... Oh, I'm glad that uh, Big John McCarthy is holding his son accountable for that scoring and shit. He's like, now you got that shit wrong, which is good. Um, yeah, I, I mean, and I don't know what else... What, what more can be said, but, like, how Bustin' Nut was saying, like, the UFC definitely took a hit, and uh over on <clears throat> Ariel Hawani show they brought up a great point like they you don't really like if this was Sean and uh and um Peter Young like it makes sense right because i guess there there can be an argument made there right and it's usually whenever these iffy scorecards get made it's usually like a close fight so if this were to happen with the main event then i'd be fine with it but like the fact that it happened with this fight where it's kind of clear who won I don't know. It just it it just sucks. It sucks for Jared Gordon because he's such a great guy. If you ever like listen to his interviews and shit like that, he's very humble. He has a very rough background, so he he's just like a very overall great guy with a great heart. It sucks to see that shit happen to people like him, and especially like with Patty. Like, dude, it's I mean, like I get it. I, I yeah, get that's it. a win bonus that he loses. Yeah, all I, all just to to play a part of an agenda that that's fucking annoying to be frank and then dana like tried to defend it like dana was like well you know i thought he was winning the fight and then he went and just you know grapples in the third round like bro shut the fuck up like but even then even then that third round even then that third round it, it looked more for him than anything and patty said it himself too that he thought he was up so he he let off the fucking the gas you know at that third round but um, yeah, man, it just just sucks to see this shit. And again, like I I get it, Patty he he has this persona. There's a gen. There's an agenda there that needs to get followed. I understand I it, it, but he's gonna be like I think he's gonna be like another Darren Till. Mm-hmm. And but the difference is the difference is when Darren Till came up, like he was hot. He was fucking fucking people up. He was having great fights. And then, boom, he just started getting slept, slept, slept. Mm-hmm. Patty, I mean, he's over here <clears> finishing <throat> people, and he's flamboyant and everything, just like Till was. And then he's going to start getting slept, and then we're going to see it. And that's that's how his career, career trajectory is going to be. It's going to be like Darren Till's, you know, this highly touted prospect from England. Everybody's hyping him up. He has this personality. And then, boom, it's shit on. he gets shit on by high-level fighters. Yeah. 
And I mean, like like I said right now, guys, like I, I get it, right? Like Patty, he has this persona. He has this agenda that he needs to follow. But dude, it's all right. It's okay for you to admit that, fuck, dude, I probably didn't win that fight. Like, like I, he immediately started saying that, yes, he won, yada, yada, yada. Like, shit. I, and I, I hate I hate to make the comparison, but the closest comparison that I can think of is with, is with Sean. When Sean heard that decision, he was like, I, like, I don't even know. Like, I, I need to go back and watch it. You know what I mean? Like, he and it was OK because you, you respect the guy, right? Because he's human. Like, Patty needs to understand that. Like, it, it's OK to be. Yeah, but the crazy thing, thing that, that Sean fight was a good fight. Yeah. And that and was not only was a good fight. Me. It's like as much as the decision might not have seemed the right one. Sean had a lot of fucking moments in that fight. And and to be honest, like, I, I mean, I'm not a fighter. <laughs> so don't even, like, if, if this shit gets clipped or whatever, like, don't even fucking come at me and say that. I'll get my ass beat because I will. But Fuck these fools. Patty did not show any type of, like, high skill, like, fighting IQ or anything. You know what I mean? It's like... Striking you, department? No. If you... I, I, I firmly believe if you could get Patty past... uh. Two and a half, dude. It, and if you have the striking and you have the the stamina for like the rest of the of the rounds, you could do some major damage on Patty. He's very flat footed. His fucking his head's out there, just sticking fucking in outer space, and his hands Literally. are down. And he's like, what I was noticing is like he's like this a lot. He doesn't have his fists up like that. He's like this, he's legit like this, like kind of like he's thriller like shit. It's fucking like, like it's weird. And then he throws he throws the uppercut. This yeah, is he's... this is him all day. Yeah, it's it's easy to get in there and like. And let me tell you, bro. Let me tell you, man. This top fifteen at number fifteen, you have Tony Ferguson. Shit won't fly with him. You know, you got newly oh, added Grant no. Dawson. Grant no. Dawson is a pressure pressure fighter. You got Hinato Moicano. We've seen what kind of fighter Moicano is. The dude has a chin. You know, he has the stamina, he has the heart, and he's relentless. You have Demirish Magulov at 12. You know, he's up and coming. We still don't know what he is, but put him against him. You know, it'll be a different fight. Dan Hooker? <clears throat> I don't know. You might see a d- better fight. But then, you know, you got guys like Jalen Turner. They're fucking so explosive. Armin Saryukian, a monster. RDA, I mean, RDA's RDA. He's, yeah, he's, he's always going to be he's, one of the best balanced fighters. He's not Matias there Matias Gamera. Faziv, you know, and then you're starting to get into Chandler, Dariush, Gazi, Poirier, Oliver. Like, that's why you don't see Patty talking about, you know, fighting for a championship because he's not at that level. No. And it sucks to say, you know, but I mean, he's kind of brought this upon himself. Like, if you're going to market yourself like one of the best and highest, you know, top athletes, then actually, you know, be about it. And I mean, he couldn't beat Jared Gordon. In my eyes, he couldn't beat Jared Gordon. Yeah. You know, even if you put Conor McGregor against Jared Gordon, I'm pretty sure McGregor will sleep him. Yeah. Um, um so Bussin Nut asked, Y'all think this is going to change the scoring criteria or judging? Ed, what do you I think? think <clears throat> I think something needs to change. I yeah, think something I, needs to change. I, <clears throat> I think something needs to change as well, but is something going to change? I I highly doubt it. Um it, they brought it up. I don't think... brought it up a while ago. Like maybe we should see more ten eights or yeah, ten tens. I, I don't think the scoring criteria. I mean. The scoring criteria is completely broken. Like I, I mean, it's not a bad scoring criteria. It's it, but it, it you can improve on it. Uh, the judging, yep. dude. We we just need to hold judges more accountable. And like, I mean, I'm a little biased because obviously I do listen to Ariel a lot. But the only real um solution that's been offered or that he could think of is just doing open scoring right so after every round uh an official goes in there and basically tells each coach hey this is a score and then they go and they tell their fighters and then they understand right and then at the beginning of the next round about a minute or two in it'll say the official score just so then the audience knows and now there's there's a lot of like Oh well, what if like the fighter sees that he's winning fucking across the whole board and he lets off the gas? Well, the counter argument to that is 
that's true. But now you have somebody on the opposite end that knows that he needs yep. to knock your ass out. So are you going to let off the gas and possibly let this other guy like knock you out? You know what I mean? It's just, yeah. Cause there's times, but then again, there's times where it is obvious that you're losing the fight, right. Or that a fighter's losing the fight no. and they still don't go for broke, you know, Mm-mm. they still don't. And we've seen it plenty of times in DC, you know, he's always calling it out. Like at the end of the day, you know, your hand's not going to get raised. It's either from you, you know, getting slept or dropped or you know it's or it's from you not giving it your all you know you choose and honestly like fuck if i was down like we're not fucking fighters but at the end of the day like you don't have to go out on your shield but at least empty the gas tank till you have nothing right Mm -hmm. because even if you're tired you know you might get caught one or two times you won't get slept but you're just like fuck i can't continue and that's gonna happen and that's fine you know no i don't think anybody's gonna blame me for that but it's better than fucking spending five minutes knowing you're down in a fight and not doing shit. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, well, we're just fucking casuals at the end of the day. We don't know shit about anything, so we we only give our input and what we feel like should be done or what could be improved on. I just like, hate how Dana <laughs> shat on Gordon. Yeah, it was fucked up. I mean, and but Gordon they... fucking for basically for basically just taking his prize away from him, you know? Oh. Like that's what Gordon did. Yeah, and then it was um, a lose lose for Gordon. It seems yeah, like because because Morono wa- got his win money too, and he well he lost. Um, yeah, it's it's a lose lose for Gordon because now it's like he lost the fight, he lost his win bonus, and now fucking Dana's out there disrespecting you. So now it's like, I don't know. Yeah. Stupid. Um. Let's see. People aren't but, gonna take fights because of that now. Yeah, busting out what what I tell y'all about my boy still not still knocks. Remember the name I said around three TKO, but his submission was close enough. He, oh, he's talking about um the Plesis. He did submit him, right? Yeah, he choked him out. Yeah. But I mean, come on, bro. Come on, bro. Dude, that was such a good fucking fight, though. He let's, literally, yeah, let's talk about you that. You can't one lose now. your gas tank in the first round. To these middleweights out here. Yeah. Like Izzy, you know, Pereira. And I'm not saying he's at that level yet. But even guys like Paulo Costa, you know, Sean Strickland. You know, even Andre Muniz. Put him against Andre Muniz. I'm trying to see that. Give, him, give Andre Muniz a fight. Give him Kelvin Gaslam. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Duplessis is definitely... he He's a lot better than, than I had anticipated but th- there's the obvious caveat there is that fucking first round i can only imagine how busting up was watching that fight because ed and i were just on our fucking feet that whole fight dude it was darren till had it in in all fairness and honesty darren till had yeah, that fucking yeah, fight. honest opportunity yep but he does he he doesn't have that dog in him he, he didn't go out there and he didn't finish the fight what the fuck is this um has a fucked up nose although he said uh he's a mouth breather cut there until no no i have a fucked up nose <laughs> and when i'm fucking exercising that shit still opens up enough for me to breathe come on cut there until i don't know i don't think he's lost enough we've seen guys like lose 10 fights in a row they still ain't been cut john volante fucking Lost like every fight in the USC and never got cut. He got to leave out on his own terms. So I don't know about cutting Darren Till. Yeah. Let, let's let's slow it down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Duplessis does look good. He does look powerful. Very explosive. It's just, you know, it's a gas tank thing. I mean, same thing for Hamza, though. But the thing is, you know, we've seen Hamza outlast. Anyways. Uh, let's just Let's just go from the... Uh, top of the card to the bottom now. So Jan Blahovic versus Magomed We're not gonna talk about this whole card. Fuck no. What other fights? But, uh, talk about? Yeah, Jan Blahovic, Magomed. I mean, come on, let's call it how it was. Remember, these fights are scored by a round, right? So you go round one, round one, very even. Obviously, these guys are filling each other out. But Jan had a lot of reactions to the leg kicks, did he not? And they both, I think they both hit each other in terms of, like, head strikes. It wasn't like, you know, 
anybody did anything extra. Magomed, you know, threw some leg, uh, head kicks, but he didn't really land them flushly. And Jan still, you know, he had body shots in there. So it was even, you can make a case for either or. I thought Jan had round one, fine, whatever. Round two, Jan really starts beating up that leg, right? He gets a lot of reactions, and then you start to see Magomed take a little bit of pain. Round three, Jan fucking obliterates the leg. You see Magomed stop so many times because of those leg strikes. Okay, round four. Round four is where we take the turn, right? Magomed takes down Jan, keeps him down there the whole round. Not much going on, but he does that, right? Same thing for round five. One of those rounds, I think it was like four. They said it could be 10-8 because of how much he had him down there. but Or, or round five, whatever. Still, if round two and three went to Jan based on those leg damage, because remember, damage Trump saw, that's the only kind of damage anybody had. Not only that, Magomed got cut up in the third, right? Okay, rounds two and three, and then you go rounds four and five, clearly Magomed, fine. That's even, right? Even split. So it all comes down to round one. So if a judge is going to base a decision off round one, and it ends up being a draw, how, how can anybody be mad at that? Like, how? Literally, round two, yawn. Nobody's going to argue that. Round three, Jan. Nobody's going to argue that. Obviously, four and five, Magomed. Nobody's going to argue that. So what does this come down to? A round one, which was super close. Super close. Right? So, like, why are you going to be fucking mad? You can't be angry at a decision that makes complete sense. You can't have recency biases when it comes down to the decisions. That's why fighters, you know... If you leave it to the judges, it's going to go to the judges. They're going to base them all five. This is at one. They don't judge the whole fight. It's based off each and every round. Yeah. So I thought I thought it was a good decision. Did I think it was going to be a draw? No. Did I think <laughs> it was going to be a split? Yeah, I actually thought it was going to be a split. I actually was like, you know what? Jan has a chance at winning this because he might have taken that first round. Right? So a split draw, I got no problem with it. I think it makes complete sense. Gonzo, what do you think? I th yeah, I, I agree with you as well. It's just, it's kind of weird whenever you look at the judges' scorecard. So Mike Bell had it 48-47 for Jan, rounds one through three. Uh, Derek clearly had it um, uh, round one and two for Jan, and then round three, four, and five for Magomed with, a five, with the fifth round being a 10-8. And um, Sal Diamato, he had rounds one through three, yawn, and then rounds four to through five for Magomed with a eight ten with a ten eight in round five. Yeah, I don't, I don't hate it. I, I don't, I don't hate it. it. I just feel like you can't. In this one, you can't blame the judges. I, I agree with uh, round one being a ten nine for yawn. Same thing for round two, same thing for round three. Round four definitely went to Magomed, and round five definitely went to him as well. Now, I want to rewatch that fifth round to make it more clear decision if it was a 10-8. But if two of the judges say it's a 10-8, then I'm probably going to agree with that. So I feel like Sal Diamato probably has the most accurate scorecard, which is a draw. And it's fine. Ed, I mean, Ed agrees with it. I agree with it. I think the only people that should be held accountable here are the fighters, right? specifically like i don't want to throw yawn under the bus but fuck dude you were close you were fucking close man he took down he took out the legs if you could chop one of the legs and render it useless force him to switch stances and do the same thing to the other leg like why are you letting him engage on takedowns dude like uh... Maybe it's because he got tired, but dude, like, he his leg kicks look so fucking flawless. You know what I mean? Like, Magomed, like, I gave him props for hanging on and getting that draw, but fuck, man, you were losing that fight. Look at this. Look at this. I didn't even see this. So, unanimously, <laughs> round one went to all three judges. So, there goes my argument. Yeah. But, they had round three... One of the judges, there clearly he had round three and gave that to to Magomed, Magomed which is fucking that, weird. 
I don't know how. And that's what caused. That's what caused the, the split. Uh huh. And to me, that doesn't make sense because Magomed did take him down at the end of the round with like a minute left or so, but still, like damage Trump saw. And if you were just like striking, strikes can be deceiving because obviously Magomed had a bunch of strikes at the end of the fight. But if you look at damage, who came out of that fight more damage? Magomed. I'm pretty sure it was Magomed. Yeah. So it actually came down to the third round. I don't know. Yeah, it's That's weird. crazy. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the crazy part is that Glover's finally going to get a shot. And it's versus our boy. Fucking. Uh, forgot his name already. I said he's a boy. Yeah, it's going to be Glover and Ed. What's the other dude's name? The Ma Hill, baby. The Ma Hill, yeah. That's gonna so, be some heat. Yeah, it'll be a fun fight. So, no, so nothing terribly terrible came out of this uh, fight. I mean, we got that one. So, uh, Bustin' at twenty nine says, "I would have been happy forty eight forty seven either side. I had it forty eight forty seven, Yan." And I, I feel totally like, like totally. I, I, I feel like the majority of people had it that way. But you know, after watching the fight and seeing how it unfolded, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not mad with the draw. Fine. I just don't understand how so many people complained about that. Yeah. It doesn't make sense to me, but um, I don't know. And then San, uh, Ponzinibbio and Alex Morono, uh, Ponzinibbio, the boy, definitely pulled it out at the end there. Um, fuck, man. Argentina, baby. Argentina. Messi. Messi versus France. Ed, who do you got? I don't know. You don't care. I'm not going to pick. I got I'll Argentina. Probably watch. I'll watch I'll too. Probably watch. I got Argentina though. Uh, okay, then we there until whatever. Ah, oh, dude, and that's another fight that I didn't enjoy watching either. It was the Bryce mention Bryce Mitchell and, and Ilya Taporia. Bryce claims that he had the flu the week prior. Ilya says, "Well, that's a fucking excuse. He's just talking out of his ass, just like the rest of the fighters." But shout out to Ilya, man. Shout out to that fucking man. If there's a yeah. real MVP, if there's someone who got anything out of this fucking uh card yeah, it was him definitely came up the most yes because people saw him as the guy that was talking shit to patty and he fucking went out there and finished a beast in bryce mitchell it's like Ilya was the villain and now he just became the yeah. freaking hero in the mma world which is crazy because people like to see results output. and out output. yes and output People like to see that. If you're gonna walk the walk, you better talk the fucking talk. Or not, if you Sergio talk the Pettis, talk, you better he, walk the walk. He tweeted it and he said it best. He's like, many people tried, but you know, nobody could really duplicate the success of Conor McGregor because Conor McGregor had a following, not only for being, you know, the most flamboyant fighter in the game, but he was performing each and every single time he went out and fought. You know, and when he wasn't sleeping, people, he was getting in dog fights, yeah. you know, with Diaz and Chad Mendez. Um, so it's like, hate him, you know, hate him all you want. But that guy, you know, he really did something to the game because yeah. he had the perfect blend of dominance and and charisma. Yep. And that's <clears> something <throat> we don't see anymore. Uh, then Raul Rosas Jr. Fuck, man. Boy, do Jay, we got a fucking problem on our Jay hands. Jay Perry was talking all that shit to get fucking choked out by an 18-year-old. That is That's crazy. fucking crazy, by a high man. schooler, a high schooler on, on live TV. That's insane. That's like saying a fucking teacher getting his ass whipped by a student. Like, that's fucking crazy, man. Do we are like Zinia Rosenstruck. And I, I do want to I do, I do talk a little bit more about that Raul stuff. Dude, we we definitely got a problem with that guy. If <clears throat> the UFC plays his cards right, and if Raul continues to say that he wants to be the youngest UFC champion, I do not see why they wouldn't want to give him that type of opportunity, right? If he continues to go out there and perform that that he performs, and if he gets in fucking dog fights, like fuck, if he get if he fights someone inside the top fifteen, and uh, it, it ends up being a fucking like. A close fight but if he's like out there like putting in work and trying his fucking heart out and then wins by like a split decision that that i feel like that that only builds him you know what i mean 
because he's out there. He's going to be actively fighting and try to put on these crazy ass performances. Now, I'm sure there's going to be a point in his career where he's going to fight someone where he meet, he meets his maker, you know, the same Matt, the same um fighter as him. But if he could still pull off those wins, then fuck it. We might we might see some fucking history. But in, said, in the in the bantamweight division, that's tough. <clears throat> What's the nut said? Tapoya will end Holloway from contending for another title and make that match next. I just want to say, sl- slow your roll. Jai Herbert almost knocked out Ilya in the last fight. Um, just because Max looked slow against uh, Alex doesn't mean he's slow. Let's uh, let's pump the brakes on that one. But yeah, I mean, Raul Rosa definitely looks fucking. He reminds me of, like a Daniel Sabatello. Like he's a pest. He just comes at you, and like that takedown on Perrin was fucking dominant. He looked hella strong. So. But he has fucking quick transitions and good jujitsu yep. too. <clears throat> I mean, he does have he does have nice little strikes too. Um, from his contender series fight, we've seen it. So, yeah. I mean, he's 18. It's way too early to tell what kind of fighter he'll be. Um, but I, I mean, obviously, he looks he looks really really good. And who who you know who says he can't who says he can't be up there? I mean, we saw John Jones because you know John Jones was probably ready to be champ by 21. Yeah, you know, in our reality, and he ended up winning at 23. <laughs> so, I mean, who says Raul Rosas can't be that next guy? He Dude, might win he by has. 20. Four years, man. To beat that record, he has fucking time. He and he already has time. a professional win. The game has definitely changed. It's crazy. Yeah. Um. And it's crazy listening to his interview with Ariel too. Like he's he sounds like a kid, bro. Like he yeah, he is a kid. Like I'm not talking shit about him, but obviously, like there's so many things he's like not educated on. Like he was talking about his um his uh. His mom's like van, and yeah. then he's like, he's like, I don't know much about cars, but I think it has like eight thousand miles, so you know it's about to fall off. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, even if he said eighty thousand, like eighty thousand, still not yeah. high mileage, really. But like, like I said, like I'm not talking shit, but he just sounds like he he has so much more to learn. Yeah, he in just, life. he just, yeah, he just. I lacks, hope he's surrounded lacks. by the right people. That's all I get. You know. It's, like you know it's it's tough ed like i feel like he, he'll he be struggling like that for a little bit especially if he's focusing all of his attention and his energy towards mma right because if you want to learn generally about anything you got to give up time so you you invest time here you invest a little bit of time there you invest a little bit of time over there and what does that do that's going to put a halt to your career goals and your dreams you know what i mean and at this point if his the UFC's on board with it. They're gonna fucking push him, and he's gonna continue to push himself. Fuck! After the interview, he said that the next day he was already training. That he had went to like an invitational for a grappling or some shit, and he started doing some grappling. And and even that day that he had that interview, he's all yeah tomorrow I'm gonna start training again. You know what I mean? So he's fucking he's dedicated, man. But I mean, it's just it's the shit you get. You know what I mean? Like lack of street knowledge and other experiences, but in return you get a fucking beast of a fighter you know what i mean so has its um trade-offs uh yeah i don't know what else to talk about billy q do this thing shout out to billy q he put on a really good fight um, Chris curtis clean knockout on oh yeah Buckley. that was almost tough to watch too and then jorzinho clean knockout on chris Dacus. but that's pretty much it yeah i mean we could we could start as far Keeping as out the second half of this pre-show. Yeah, as far pre-show as matchmaking, show. I don't really want to do that. There's just too much and it's we'll let we the already know what the title fight, out. so yeah, it's not that important. Um, Ed, is there anything in the news that you've heard of that you want to touch on? <sighs> MMA news? I don't think so. Nothing <sighs> pressing right now. Yeah, I don't I don't know if there's anything that's pressing either. Uh Busta Nut, is there anything that you know of that you want us to talk about? If there's not, then we'll just get right into it. <clears throat> the last UFC uh, fight night of the year. Um, Sean Strickland versus Jared Cannonier. Gonna be a fucking barn burner. Just a reminder, guys, it does start at 4 p.m. Pacific time. So make sure you're not waiting till 7. And then the prelims start at 1 p.m. So, um, yeah, from from head to toe, guys, this 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 card is not bad, not bad at all. 
Ed, do you want to kick it off and talk about the Jared Cannonier and the Sean Strickland fight? Yeah, I mean, in terms of the prelims, we got a couple people that are pretty good. Uh, Manel Cape, he's fighting. He's number 12 in the flyweight division. He's pretty exciting. Brian Battle, um, I think he's Portugal. on his second fight at welterweight. He's coming back. Um, he's fighting and not. Oh, how do you pronounce that? Fakrit I don't know. Um, so Brian Battle, I think this is going to be the first time in his career that he's an underdog. So that's going to be one to keep an eye on. He's been looking pretty solid in his last few fights. So I think he's just coming off a rear naked choke as well. Uh, and then in the bantamweight, surprisingly, Saeed Nurmagomedov and Sadio Kab, uh Kakramanov, two Saeeds, um, they're going at it. But Saeed, this is like the first time I've ever seen a Nurmagomedov. Might not really be related to Habib, but he's an underdog. So that's kind of crazy. And considering the last fight we saw Saeed fight in, I think we saw it live. Mm -hmm. uh, he literally won that fight in like two minutes. It's kind of crazy to see him as an underdog. So this Sadio Cobb guy must be really, um, really serious. I haven't really touched up too much on him from Uzbekistan. But uh, Jake Matthews, he's fighting. Jake Matthews, we just saw him coming off a win against Andre Fialo, too. <clears throat> that was going to be nice. And I think that's it for the prelims. You're not going to talk about Cheyenne? Cheyenne Bites. That's uh, Lionel's girl. The drama? The drama queen? Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, I don't have anything to say about the prelims. Ed, Ed covered it pretty nicely, but I mean, like I said, guys, even some of the prelims fights are going to, are going to be something new, um, worth watching. So you, there's nothing that I know of as far as sports combat or anything that's going to happen this weekend. Uh, Fresno state is going to the Jimmy Kimmel board, whatever that shit is. Um, so, I mean, if you want to watch that Valley natives and shit, but. Nothing much that's gonna go on on Saturday. Um, but yeah, Ed, what what do you think about Jared Cannon versus Sean Strickland? I like that fight. I think it's good. I think it might be pretty exciting. I mean, honestly, it could go either fucking way. Um, I don't know. It sucks because Sean Strickland. We just saw him get absolutely slept. But he doesn't look like the type of guy who wants to get slept again. I think he could actually grind out a win in five. Um, I think he could do the same thing he did to Hermanson. So I'm going to go with Sean Strickland by decision. Nice. We're already starting off the, the card. Good, Ed. Yeah, I'm going to have to uh, go against you on this one. And here's why. Just how you stated that Sean Strickland learned something from his last fight. Well, Jared Cannonier did the same thing. I feel like Jared Cannonier, he understands now that he can't just be not aggressive and always waiting for um or seeing what the opponent wants to do, like how he fought with Izzy. A lot of people want to blame Izzy for that fight and why it was so boring. And yeah, I I blame him too, but also too, like it's it takes two to tango, and Jared Cannonier just wasn't engaging. Uh, Jared Cannonier is kind of getting a little old, but I feel like he's still in a in good shape to where he could dish out some some knockouts. Does he get it here with Sean Strickland? I don't know. I I do believe it will go to five, and I do believe Jared Cannonier will win. But there, I feel like there's also going to be moments where Jared Cannonier um poses a real threat to Sean Strickland to the point where Sean Strickland has to scramble, run around, you know, get, get out of violence, you know, and shit like that. Uh, if Jared Cannonier can bring the pressure, I think he could win. But if not, it's going to be a long night for Jared Cannonier. And I think Sean Strickland can pull out that win, but I think Jared Cannonier ultimately will win this fight. Alrighty. Well, the co-main event and probably one that Ed is very excited about. We have Armin Saryukian versus Ed's boy, Damir Ismagulov. Ed's been hot. Wow, Bust the Nut just said Ismagulov is not as good as Saryukian. Ed, Crazy. Ed, Ed has been on this hype train, and he has been telling us about this guy, Dem Demir Ismagulov. Ed, go ahead and go off. I mean... <laughs> It's a fair argument, I guess, when you compare the two. 
and you say that uh, maybe Armin has had more fights or whatever. And if you compare resume, I guess, but he's only had like one more fight than Demir. And, you know, it's not like Demir hasn't, you know, freaking performed. And, yeah, I don't think he has that many finishes in the UFC, if any. But, you know, even in his professional career in general, he's had, like, eight straight wins by, like, TKO in the first or second round in other events. So that just goes to show you, like, he has hands. He has striking. And then in his last fight, he fought, you know, a good fight against, uh, was it, like, Matias Gamra? No, no, no. Um, Guram Kudeladze, who has a win over Mateus Gamera, and then Mateus Gamera, you know, has a pretty good win over Saryukin. Not that that, you know, means anything, but still, like, Guram Kudeladze is also another fucking scary lightweight who's not yet in the rankings, but, you know, he, we just never really seen him. He has no body of work, but he's a fucking dangerous-ass fighter. So, you know, the next time we see him fight, I guarantee you, you know, it's going to be more fireworks. Um, so whenever you hear Gurum Kudetalatse, keep a lookout. He's a great fighter. And he went at it with Demir Shmogulov. And Demir Shmogulov was able to, you know, starve off that volume and also, you know, pick him apart in his own right. And he got that UD win. So that was, to me, his most notable win so far, of course. But, I mean, this guy, he's just, he just reminds me of like a Peter Yan. He's just technical. He's balanced. Um, he has great, you know, takedown defense. It's it's not like his wrestling is like all there, but he's still got something in the bag. Obviously, we know what kind of fighter Saryukin is. He likes that wrestling. He likes, you know, pummeling you, but we've seen it not work out from him before, and that was against Mateus Gamera. And to me, I mean, in a sense, he looks a lot beefier than Mateus. So who knows? Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, I like Saryukin. I've always liked him. You know, he, he gave he gave uh, Isla Makashev a lot of work when they fought. Oh, yeah. And to, that's respectable. And it was back in 2020, uh, but it's still respectable. He gave him all he could handle. But um, I just think Demir is just on that level where his fight IQ is just a lot higher. His, his striking technicality is just a lot higher. And I just feel like this is just a fight he's just going to get done, whether it's three rounds or a finish. I don't think it's going to be a finish, but... I definitely got him winning by decision. Yeah. Well, Ed, it's another one that I don't agree with you, but I this one is shit. Fuck it up. This one is does come with a little bit of biases. And I, I mean, I'm be honest. I'm not gonna sit here and try to sell this and say that I'm a hundred percent um informed on the mirror. You're the one that knows more about him. This is probably going to be the first fight where I actually pay attention to him. I should have done my research on Demir, but I haven't. All I know about him is that you're on his hype train and he has like won a lot of fucking fights. Um and he's and he's on a fucking tear. <clears throat> but uh, talking about Armin, I, I I don't know, it's just I, I um Bustin' up brings up a great point as well. The fact that Armin has been in a in five round wars and he has cardio, he has this great wrestling. If you're able to wrestle with Armin's it, only been in one five round fight though. That's still experience. That was his last fight. So. Yeah, that's still experience. It, it is. So. That's well. That's one more than the mirror. That that to me that I don't know. That doesn't tell me anything. This is going to be a three round fight. Well, I, I guess, like, the argument, or not an argument, but I guess, like, my point being is just that he has it there if it's needed, right? I'm not, not saying that it's they're going to go five rounds, but if he could go five rounds, I don't see why, he, why he's going to get gassed in a three-round. Um, I don't know. I, I, just, I just feel like he's, uh, he's a little bit more re- well-rounded. He could probably um, go off all three with the mirror as well, but... Like I said, I'm not going to sit here and try to say that I know everything about Demir. This is solely based on like biases and what I've seen with with Armin. And <clears throat> I don't know. I, it's, I feel like Armin does have some good wrestling and he could probably utilize that against Demir. Um, you, do, you do say that Demir does have good uh, defense as well. But Armin does hold the like a quote unquote next level wrestling. but. I don't know. We'll just see how that one goes. I'm I'm not gonna be upset if Demir wins. If he wins, and I'm 
probably going to be riding that train as well. But as of now, I'm going to ride with uh, Armin and see. Wait, did you pick Strickland? No, I didn't pick Strickland. I picked Jared. You picked Cannoneer? Yeah, I picked Cannoneer. Oh, shit. <clears throat> um, but yeah, that's my pick, guys. Um, Armin. So, already to to start it, Ed and I do not see eye to eye, which is, which is good because we haven't had a card like this in a while. Ed, we got the flyweights. Amir Albazi. I'm not even going to attempt to make a pick at this. Versus Alessandro Costa. I'm just going to say the minus 400 favorite round one. That's Holy it. shit. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't fucking see that. And again, this is where you and I disagree. I didn't fucking see that one, but I already, I already submitted my pick for Alessandro Costa. And the reason why I'm doing that is because he has blonde hair. And if you have blonde hair and you're from Brazil, that, that only tells me one thing. He's probably does. Um, but where's uh, Charles from or that, that camp? Shoot. No, that's not true. Shoot the box. Yeah. So I see that blonde hair. I am. I automatically think about the crazy Brazilians over there. So that's why I'm I'm rolling with him. And this is this his debut. This is probably his I think debut. So. I don't know. That's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. All right. So quick, quick uh, pick for Ciceras, Julian Rosa. I got Ciceras' decision. What do you got? Uh, same here. I'm not gonna. <clears throat> I'm not gonna All ride right. that that high right. train too much. So let's go on this fight. This is actually a pretty interesting. When it's Drew Dober against Bobby Green, arguably have a similar career. Arguably in the state, you know, the same state in their career. Um, but oh man, this is. I I think this is a very good fight. Obviously, we know Bobby Green for being very entertaining. You know, he likes fighting a stand up fight. He has hands. But, I mean, Drew Dober, he's always been a guy who's, like, been a warrior. He's always been out there. And, you know, he, he could hold it to his own in his own right. I mean, we saw him against Alves, finished Alves. He he withstood, you know, one of the best first rounds ever by Terrence McKinney and beat him. Um, I don't know. It's, to me, this looks like it might be a really good fight. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, though. I can't just say Bobby Green's going to win this one because they're similar fighters. I think it's... Drew Dover has fucking chin of steel. Bobby Green, you know, has output, but Bobby Green gets reckless a lot of times when he fights. He keeps his hand to, hands down. Um, and it could work against some fighters, but I don't know if it works about others. So I'm leaning Drew Dover decision here, man. I'm leaning uh, Drew, Drew Dover with a potential finish. I'm not, I'm not going to say Drew Dover finish, but with the potential finish. And what I mean by that, is that if Bobby Green like completely goes balls to the wall and does some Terrence McKinney type of shit, I feel like Drew Dober has the scrambling techniques and the abilities to get back up whenever he needs to, or at least try his fucking heart out. You hit that fucking jaw of steel, it's not going to go anywhere. If you try to wrestle him, well, Drew Dober's going to fucking scramble, and then eventually he's going to pick you apart. So... <clears throat> That, that's that's where my decision's coming from. Uh, so just to keep it short, I got Drew Dober um, decision. And I don't know if that influences you at all, but... That's enough said. This fight does not go the distance right. Drew Dober will get dropped round one and then get back up and finish Bobby Green. All right. <laughs> so, yes, it's so easy to think that this fight won't go to decision. But, like, I dude, like, is. Drew Dober, like, he can outlast output. He really can. And Bobby Green, you know, he has hands, he has volume, but in his last, like, what, like, five fights, he only has one finish, and that was against Ally Akinta. Because, you know, not, or Nasra Hakpras, he didn't finish him. <clears throat> Rafael Fazeev, he didn't finish him. Tiago Moises, he didn't finish him. You know? Like, there's a lot of guys he didn't finish. It Actually, in his last, like, seven fights, he only has one finish. So, I mean, I'm not going to say he's not strong. He doesn't have KO power. But we can't sit here and act like this guy just finishes every fight he's in. Like, no, he's in entertaining fights. Yes, but he doesn't finish every fight. Whereas Drew Dober, like, he's always in a fight no matter where it goes. And Drew Dober actually has, I think, a few more finishes than Bobby. But even that, you know, it's not like Drew Dober has... Super, you know, high level at KO power. I just think Bobby gets really reckless sometimes. 
keeping his hands down and he gets caught. And if he gets caught by the wrong person, you know, Drew Dover could be that guy. But I just think this could be a, just a good fight. It's going to go back and forth. But I see, it, I could see it going the distance. Uh, so who's your pick? I said Drew. Oh, decision. Okay. Drew decision. Okay. Yeah, <clears throat> it, it's going to be a fun fight. I'm actually kind of upset that it's kind of so low in the main card. Like, how the fuck does Alex Caceres get over that? And even this dude with the fucking debut. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, maybe they place it there on purpose, though. Maybe. I mean, but that's, that's going to be a fun fight for, for damn what, what sure. Time, what time is this card? It starts at 4. Yeah, it's at 4. Ouch. Um, All right. Yeah, and then the final fight's Cody Brundage versus Michael. Ed, you can try to pronounce that. I'm not. Gonna... I'm not. Wait, uh, I'll give it a stab. Olesuk? <laughs> Olesizuk? I don't, I don't know. know. Fuck. So, notable difference. It looks like Cody Brundage has a crazy-ass tattoo on his shoulder, running down his uh, tricep and his bicep like an old man and uh i don't even i call him michael but it's probably pronounced like mikhail or something like that and he has the what looks like the virgin mary on his fucking torso yeah i don't know i i already predetermined this one and i had um michael i'm gonna call him michael because i don't know how to pronounce his name i had him winning um decision so but this was before I, I I looked at the fucking the uh, the odds, and he is from Poland, so he does carry that legendary Polish power. <laughs> <laughs> automatically, yeah, automatically. Uh, What'd you think, Ed? I'm just I'm going with that guy too. He just he looks like a fucking Disney version of Jan Blachowicz. <laughs> Disney version. He looks like if they try to like, like make Jan <laughs> Blachowicz into a tune. Holy shit! He he low key kind of does at an angle look like him. Cause I looked up his name, and on this picture, uh, can yeah, that fucking kind of looks like him. It looks like the, the scuffed version of him. Yeah. See. <laughs> hey, so he do, he, he does he have be some his legendary. Younger brother. He does have some legendary Polish power. You look at this in picture. His, in his blood. Tell me that doesn't look like fucking Jan's oh, little the brother. Red shorts. Oh yes, yeah, I can see it. Same beard, same haircut, same eyes. Yeah, dude, don't sleep on this guy. He might not have the legendary Polish abs, but he definitely has that legendary Polish power. So fuck, even this picture looks like him. That's fucking crazy. Um, already Ed, what else do you got? Let's parlay Saeed <laughs> Nurmagomedov and Demir Shmagulov. You'll get some nice ass odds. Well, let me, I'm let me pull up draft. Let's see, Let's see what we got. Draft Saeed and Demir. Fucking throw in Jake Matthews, he's a lock. Jake Matthews. Saeed Nurmagomedov. Oh, fuck. And Demir Shmagulov. Okay, so... Let's look. Saeed Nurmagomedov. And Demir. How do you spell Demir? It's D-I-M-R. D-A-M-I-R. Oh, it's D-A, huh? You know what? I'm going to actually lock that in right now. Demir Ishmagulov. Demir Ishmagulov. Oh, yeah, that's not bad at all. Let's see. A two-pick parlay. You drop 100 on that bitch, your payout is $520. Bust a yeah, nut. Demir. Bet the house again. Demir. But throw in Jake Matthews and Saeed. So if we were to also throw in Jake Matthews, uh, I don't. I just 
Yeah. Jake Matthews. A positive 600, Ed. So let's let's throw in some. Can you do? Can you bet on fucking college football? Yeah, let's 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 get the money line for uh Fresno State. Fresno State. <laughs> yeah, let's. What is their money line? Uh, no, this is good. Where is it? Team futures game. Spread total. Oh, the money line. I my bad. I didn't see it. The money line is set at Fresno State is favorite, negative one sixty five. So let's show Fresno State in the mix too, and that's a positive one thousand. Easy. So if I were to put ten dollars on your four pick parlay, I'd get a hundred and thirteen thirty four. I'll take it. Take a picture of this. Uh. Bust a nut. This is all you right here. Ishmael Gulab is a walking L. So it looks like he's not too fond of Demir Ishmael Gulab. So let's take out Demir and put in uh, um, 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 uh, Mate or Armin. That's a plus 500. That's still not bad. You got three favorites and one underdog. Not bad at all. Put 20 bucks on that. Okay, I was 133. What do you think, Bustana? You thinking about uh, betting your new house? Um, <clears throat> all righty. Well, let's wrap this motherfucker up then. And we have a lot of differences on this one, which is good. We haven't had a card like this in a while. Let me just download this fuck. <clears throat> Gotta love these fucking download times. All right, cool. All righty, guys. Just to um close it out, UFC Vegas sixty six. These are our picks. What do you guys think? Let us fucking know. I'm Gonzo. Pagula, baby. That's the boy over there, Ed. Who do you think has the best picks? Let us know. Uh, make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, TikTok, all that great stuff. We have one more show before the end of this year, guys. So let's finish this year off strong. Everybody be safe. Remember, 4 p.m. start time of the main card and 1 p.m. start time for the prelims. Rear Naked Takes. We'll see you guys in the final episode of 2022 post-show of UFC Vegas 66. We'll see you guys then. Everyone have a great night. Deuces.